Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Worship Ministry Training Podcast. This is Alex and Fiedjin, your host. Just wanted to say thank you for being a listener of the podcast. I hope that everything we put out is helpful and practical and actually is something that you can use in your ministry on a week-by-week basis. That's the goal. And so thanks for letting me be a part of your life and of your ministry. I count it a privilege. Today I have the privilege of talking with Aaron Stewart, who is the co-founder of Planning Center and all of the apps that they have, and we talk a little bit about how Planning Center started and some leadership lessons he learned along the way of building one of the biggest software companies in the church space. Um, But then we move into more practical tips, tricks, and how to get the most out of using Planning Center. And Planning Center is our recommended product of the month. It just happened to work out that way. Planning Center, like you will hear in this episode, and I won't promo it too much here, but it's amazing. I mean, it's an incredible piece of software that literally makes my life and the life of thousands of worship leaders easier and less of a headache to plan our services, to schedule songs, And I will save some of the features for the actual interview, but Planning Center is our recommended product this month. You can check it out for free for 30 days. And if you have a small team, you can use it for free forever. But you can find out all this information at planning.center, planning.center. Check it out. It's awesome. So as we get into this interview with Aaron, he's going to give us a lot of tips, tricks, and ways that we can set up Planning Center to get the most out of it. But I'm going to put some links in the show notes as well for you guys so that you can watch some tutorials. And also, at the end of the interview, I might add a couple extra tips, tricks, and hacks that I've learned over the years using Planning Center. So stick around to the end of the episode, and let's jump right into today's interview with Aaron Stewart. Hey everyone, I am here with Aaron Stewart, who is one of the co-founders of Planning Center. Aaron, thank you so much for being on the podcast. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here. Aaron, um, before we get started into the interview, I just wanted to say thank you for creating an incredible product. I mean, this product has saved me so much time, and I know our listeners who use it have been super blessed by Planning Center. And I was even thinking before we hit record, like, I wonder what kind of eternal impact Planning Center has had on the world. Like when we get to heaven, I think all the time you freed up for worship leaders and all the ways you've helped services happen, I think you are going to be like blown away by what God did through your software company. So again, thank you so much. It's amazing. You're welcome. That's, uh, it's kind of humbling. It was very humbling actually, but very cool to hear. Yes, no, I'm sure. So, you know, we're talking about Planning Center, specifically, you know, for worship leaders, Planning Center Services is kind of where we live. And you're the co-founder of this thing. You've kind of dreamt it up, birthed it, and have carried it through the years to its current form. I thought it would be really wise to have you on the podcast to describe to us the best way we can use Planning Center and how we can get the most out of it. Um, But before we talk practical tips and tricks and using Planning Center, I thought it would be wise to ask you some leadership questions because, again, you've, you know, maybe accidentally created one of the biggest church software companies in the world. So it would be foolish to have you on and not actually ask you some leadership lessons that you've learned along the way. So what would you say has led to its massive growth over the years? Like what are two or three things that you attribute to Planning Center being so successful? Ooh, I love this question. Okay. Honestly, if I were to boil it down to like the core, I would say a passion for doing what you're doing and building something that you would want to use. So because Jeff and I were both working full-time in a church and I've worked at a couple of churches, I already had, and so did he, a passion for just being organized and for using technology to help organize it. So, so it's not one of these, like, and you see so many of these like new startup companies that start some company specific, they're just looking for an idea to make a whole bunch of money and cash out and sell to somebody else. And that was never our story. Our story was birthed out of, we just wanted to do our own ministry better. So we had that passion for really doing that. But then even as time went on, like even as we make decisions for Planning Center, the company, not just the company, but even the app, we do things that we would want to use. For instance, like putting ads in your app, like I get a lot of calls and emails from like, 
record labels and publishers and they know how many people are in planning center and they would love to like have their content featured and their content is good. It's not about that. But for me, I'm like, I'm logging into the site to get my job done. I don't want to be distracted by all these other things. We like, we really want to help people. And I think, I think that's evident. At least that's what people say. (laughs) I think they say that. And then because of that, then they tell their friends, you should use planning center because of X. And it's not some like master, like grand strategy that we did to like try to trick people (laughs) into like our customer support. They know they can tell people you probably shouldn't use planning center. It's not right for you. You know, we're not just looking for sales. We're looking to help people do their job better. And when we can do that, which is most of the time, then it's fun to be able to figure out how to do that. So I think those are some of the key reasons we've been as successful as we are. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, I, there's a bunch of stuff in there that you said, like one of the things that is encouraging is like, it's a, a heart of service. Like you truly want to make something that that you would use and you're not trying to make a buck. You're just trying to make something helpful. And because you're putting other people's needs before making a buck, then it actually is a useful product for people. So that's, that's cool. The other thing is like, you're crystal clear on what you're trying to accomplish. So you're like, you know, as someone who has a podcast, I get people who are like, Hey, like we want to be on your podcast or we, you know, we'll pay you to feature this product. And I'm like, no, I'm going to protect my listeners from yeah. that product. Cause I don't believe in that product, you know? <laughs> and I love hearing that from you. And it's encouraging to me to stick the course. Like I want to make a podcast that I would listen to and you want to make a product that you would use. And that ends up ministering to people who are like you or like me. So yeah. I think that's really cool. So basically if I had to boil it down, to a word, it's integrity. You guys are like, we want to be true to what we feel called to do. And God is blessing that, you know, you're not, you're not selling out right now. One more leadership question before we shift gears into like actually using the product. But so you and Jeff started this thing, the two of you, and as God has multiplied your ministry, you have had to build a team to support the need. So like, what did that look like? Cause all of us who are listening have teams and we build teams or we're mm-hmm. hopefully building teams. Like how did you guys build teams uh, and add the right people at the right time? And what were some of the most important lessons that you learned when building your team? Oh, another really good question. Um, you know, these are the things as a music major, I never thought that I would be thinking about in my life. <laughs> um, but now um, I've learned so much about this stuff. It's actually like kind of fun to get to share it because I didn't know anything about this. Uh, I've absorbed most of it. But so at the beginning, we stayed small for a long time. Like I'm talking to you who's in the church world. I also talk to lots of people who are in like the software sort of startup world. And so what I say to those people is you see all of these software companies and they get these companies that will come and like invest millions of dollars into a software company. And then they've got to grow and they've got to do something with this money. And that was never what we wanted to do. We always wanted slow, sustainable growth. And Jeff was also a very big believer in no debt. So other than at the very beginning, we took out $10,000 to get into the first conference and for some marketing things. And since other than that first $10,000, we never went into debt for anything that we've done since then. So it was always, do we have the money to do this? And the money would come in and we're like, okay, now we can afford to hire this person. And so it wasn't just money. We also waited until there was a clear need. So when you're small at the beginning, everybody's doing lots of different things, you know, development and customer support and interviews and marketing and whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know what, I'm spending more than 50% of my time on customer support. Now we need to hire a customer support person where you can start to look at what other people are doing a little bit too soon and make decisions based on what you think things should be rather than evaluating what you should do. And I see this with worship leaders all the time, actually, Um, because I go to a lot of worship conferences. I see worship leaders that go to a worship conference, see this big concert environment and all all this stuff that works sometimes just for that church, sometimes just for that church, like in the context of a conference and they'll go home and try to like implement all these things that they saw other people doing without figuring like, 
does this help me get to the next place that I should be going? And so that's something that we've always been pretty good at here is never doing something just because we were supposed to do it or this is what a company does. Like we just, okay, it's been 11 years, almost 12, and we just have someone that is in charge of marketing for us like as of six months ago. Like this is something that we needed a long time ago and we just have lots of random people do it. Um, so growing the team, honestly, that changes for us every six months, like always evaluating, like what are the challenges we're having right now and what can we do to help alleviate these challenges? Hmm. Let's, let's shift gears. Those are some of the leadership lessons you've learned. Let's shift gears and talk specifically about the product services. Um, cause that's what most of our listeners are using. Yeah. So if some of our listeners haven't heard about Planning Center, what does Planning Center Services do and what are some of the main benefits of using it? Yeah, um, Planning Center Services is our app that helps you plan every aspect of your worship service, like what songs you're going to do, the items, all that kind of stuff. It gives rehearsal tools to your musicians. Um, it helps you organize your songs library. And that's just the stuff that it does for the worship team. And that's a common misconception is that it's just for the worship team, but churches all over the place use it for scheduling of any volunteers. So it can do all your volunteer scheduling for the whole church, but it just has a couple of extra things in there. Uh, well, quite a few extra things in there for the musicians that want to use that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's so robust that I feel like we will definitely run out of time <laughs> talking about what it can do. Um, so maybe talk to us a little bit about like some of the little known features of Planning Center Services that would be helpful for our listeners to know about. Absolutely. Okay, so one of the things that we've done for a long time is transpose chord charts and transpose MP3 audio files. Now, for people that do it, you're like, well, yeah, this is like the number one thing I do, but you wouldn't believe how many people just have no idea that they can do that with Planning Center. So just to be clear, when you go to your song arrangement page, there's a button right where you add files. There's a button that says lyrics and chords, and you can go in there and you can type out your own chord chart with the chords, and then you or any member of your team can download that chord chart in any key that you want to in the Nashville number system with only the lyrics and the chords all stripped out. Um, in addition, if you upload MP3 files or M4A files, there's a button to actually transpose the audio file into whatever key you're going to do it in. Because I've heard once or twice that some of the recorded worship music might be a little bit high for some people to sing. I mean, I don't know if you've heard that before, but um, anyway, so people are very anxious to be able to put the song in the key they're going to do it in so that people can play along with it, sing along with it, rehearse it in the right key. So that is probably one of the number one things that I tell people about, but at the same time, it's also a lot easier to find on the new version of the songs page. So that's one of them. And let's see other little known features. Um, there are shortcut keys everywhere. I love this one. I want to do things as fast as possible. And especially when you're in a plan and you're like building your order of service, having to constantly move your mouse to like add an item and then add a song and then add a whatever you don't have to do that. Um, there are shortcut keys on the plans page. So you can actually just hit the first letter of whatever it is that you want to do on your keyboard and it will get you there fast. So if you want to add a song, you hit S on your keyboard and the add a song thing comes up. So you can actually put your entire set list together with the notes, with the details, with everything, mostly by just doing it on your keyboard really fast. And all of our new pages also have keyboard shortcuts on them as well to make things a lot faster. Like for instance, deleting files. If you want to delete a file or archive a team or things like that, you can usually hover your mouse over it and just hit the X on your keyboard. And on any of those new pages, if you want to see a list of the shortcut keys, when you're on the page, just type the question mark just anywhere while you're on the page and a box will pop up that shows you all the shortcut keys for that page. That's huge. Yeah, I got to start using that because I don't. I think another couple of features that I'm thinking about um, that I've actually never used is like the families grouping thing. So if you have two people on your team who are related, you can like link them. And what does that do? Like, does that tell me when I schedule Sally, her husband would like to be scheduled with her or how does that work? 
Ooh, Alex, okay, you're going to get me to talk about something that's not released yet, but might as well. Oh, right really? Here. Um, okay. So, no, I mean, th this part is released, but I'm not going to be able to talk about it without talking about something else. <laughs> um, so what household scheduling currently does is this allows you to put your family into a household, and then you can set preferences for each family member. So husband and wife can put them, and kids can put themselves on there, and I could say, when my wife is already scheduled on the plan, I prefer to be scheduled. So then when my team leader is on the plan and they click the button that says, oh, there's still one person needed, and they like look through their list of people, that then there'll be a green badge next to my name that says, hey, Aaron prefers to serve on this day. Or you can do the opposite and say, hey, um, one of us has to stay home and watch the kids if the other one is serving. So make sure that we aren't scheduled at the same time. So it will do all that stuff to help the schedulers and, and it'll even do it across ministries. Because a lot of times like husband is like scheduled like in junior high and the wife is going to be on the worship team or something. And they're ministries that don't necessarily know anything about each other, but planning center knows that they happen at the same time and they can help the team leader avoid sending a request to somebody who's just going to decline and then make you do it again later. Dude, you guys are geniuses. Oh my gosh. And uh, the thing I told you real quick, because I already teased this and I can't, people will be mad if I don't finish what I was going to say is that um, a big feature request. I'm not allowed to say this because we don't, we never talk about what we're going to do in the future. I'm not allowed to say it. Like I'm going to get myself in trouble. Um, but we're soon going to be re um, just kind of refreshing the main dashboard that has your schedule on it. And like the number one thing people have asked for on that page is that parents can see if their kids schedule or their spouses schedule and be able to see the calendar for their whole family or be able to add a block out date for like the whole family at once. So that's like the thing that I'm planning on and really, really hoping that we release. It's still going to be a couple of months for sure. Probably three or four months away, but that's one of the next big things that we plan to work on. But if I don't do it, you can't yell at me. All right. No worries. You know, it's <laughs> something I found recently because I switched, you know, hopefully my listeners don't stone me for this, but I switched to Android a few months ago. Don't worry, I'm switching back. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, uh, I uh, found that on the services app on the icon, if you hold it, it says text my team. And mm -hmm. when I click it, it actually populates a text message with their numbers so I could text them for the upcoming plan, which I'm like, you guys are geniuses. Like everything you guys do is just like, so it's to make everyone's life easier. So thank you. It's fantastic. Fun fact about that right there. Not, not the location of that button, but when you text your team, there's a little option at the bottom that says include phone number reference. Have you seen that? Yeah. Okay. So this is a problem that I had, but I never thought about it. And actually just a customer wrote in and said, hey, you should do team texting, which I already had planned on. He goes, but when you do it, you should do this thing. And he had like designed this kind of whole thing. And I took most of what he had designed. And so this is a thing that like on my worship team, I don't have everyone else on the team's phone numbers stored in my phone. And so the worship leader will send out a text to all these seemingly random people. And then people are responding back like, great, can't wait to see you there. Or, you know, I'm going to be late from work. Like all I see is just random phone numbers. So this person who wrote in told me that he had the same problem was like, if you just included a little phone number reference that had the last four digits of each person's number, then when that happens, I would know who's saying what in my text message program. And I was like, okay, that is genius. So basically I'm telling you that most of my genius that you're ascribing to me is coming from other people. Um, but I mean, I'll take the credit, I suppose. Sure. <laughs> the, the genius of you is that you're listening to other people's geniusness, wow. right? And that is something we all should do. Yeah. yeah. How about one more secret little tip? Uh, the rehearsal mix thing, like, because I know some Ooh. people have a rehearsal mix account and you can like link it. Just tell people, I'm just trying to show people our listeners, how much Planning Center can do. Let's just talk about that one real quick and then we'll move on. Sure. So Rehearsal Mix is, is from a different company. This is a company that is called Multitracks that if you didn't know, Multitracks makes a product called Rehearsal Mix because most people know about the Multitracks brand, maybe not about Rehearsal Mix. So we integrate with them. So what happens is they get the original recordings of your favorite worship songs, of like all, almost all of them. 
They go to the original ones and then they get the master tracks and they remix those tracks with almost every instrument turned up. So you can go in and you can hear Oceans with the original bass part turned up or the electric guitar one or the, you know, whatever was on there. So it's a great tool, especially for, I mean, it's a great tool for anybody, but especially if you have musicians that have a hard time knowing what to play on that song or you're, or you are asking them to mimic a song from a CD or even if you're not and you just, Hey, take a listen to these mixes to hear what a professional bass player does with a song like this. Even if you don't do it exactly how they're doing it, you can learn a lot of strategies. So anyway, they do that and we integrate with them. So when you add a song in Planning Center, you can link it with your Rehearsal Mix account. There's a whole bunch of things. Basically, first thing you have to do is go over to the Rehearsal Mix site. You pay something to them and then in Planning Center, it's just literally just a button. You say link to the Rehearsal Mix and then all of the files for every instrument in that song are just automatically, in. sometimes it's like 20 files in like 10 seconds are just in your account and all and your users can actually hear the songs and rehearse them all. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, let's shift gears here and let's talk about maybe a church who wants to set up Planning Center now that they've heard how incredible it is. And if you were gonna help a church set up Planning Center services for the very first time, like what are some key things that they need to be aware of to get the most out of the product? I'm thinking of things like assigning teams or creating teams, service types, reminder emails, tags, email templates, all that. So what are some things that um, you would tell somebody who's just setting up to be aware of? Gotcha. So like Alex said, it's just a simple list of 18 things that you have to go through. (laughs) Um, So I can say a couple of things here. One, first, before you even sign up, there is a misconception that Planning Center is only for big churches. A lot of times people were like, oh, I just thought it was only for big churches or I thought it was expensive. So if that's you, know that you pay based on how many team members you have. So we've got churches that have five people total. They're volunteers. They're still using Planning Center because anybody can be organized. It doesn't matter how many people are on your teams, you probably still are doing the same amount of songs as somebody else. Um, And what's nice is we have prices based on all of that. So you can actually sign up for a 100% free version of Planning Center that has every single feature that we have, but you only can put five people in it total. But still, even if you weren't, if you don't have a budget or whatever, use it for yourself just to get your own songs organized in there. Anyway, so that's number one. Number two is once you decide to start, start slowly. People will often sign up for their 30-day trial and feel like, oh, to get my money's worth out of this, I have to add every song that I've ever done and all the team members that I've ever used and I have to backfill all this information. And that quickly becomes overwhelming and a lot of people end up not following through. So by starting slow, I mean just go in there, add the five songs you're going to do this week and you're six or seven team members. Actually, the first week, maybe don't even add team members. Just add your songs and see how you feel about it yourself. And then you can add more on as time goes on. So those are the two things that I would say when you're starting, have that strategy in mind. So moving over to like, what are the more specific things? Well, if I were going to boil it all down to things that you might not think, most everything you're going to think about doing, but the one thing you might not think think to do is actually setting up your team correctly. And so when you're in your service, you go and you have to click create a new team. And for instance, I would say band is my team. And then in that team, I create positions. So I would have band team and then positions would be drums, guitar, keys, whatever. And then each of those positions, I assign people to them. Part of the reason this can be confusing is we do let you just schedule people for a weekend without officially putting them on a team. So that can get people in trouble if they just are just always scheduling, but they never do like the actual setup process, then you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. So like officially setting up your team first is going to make things so much easier. So after you set up your team, then you're going to want to make a template. Almost every ministry that I know of has something predictable about the way they schedule their teams. Either it's the exact same people every week, 
or it's the exact same people every other week, or it's not the same people, but it's the same positions. So here's an example that combines all of those. At my church, let's say I'm the worship leader every single week. My drummer is the drummer every single week, but the rest of my band alternates and I choose different people based on the week. So I can go in, I can make a template and in the template, I put myself in confirmed. I put my drummer in potentially confirmed, but maybe unconfirmed since it's somebody else. That way he'll get an email asking him just to confirm. And then the rest, instead of putting people in, I'll put in what's called a needed position. So I'm just saying keys. I'm going to need one person on keys, need two people on guitar, need one person on bass, need somebody on vocals, whatever it is that's needed. So my template has two actual people and then four needed positions. Then when it's time to action, so that's step number two is the templates. Then step three is actually planning your service. You go in, you plan your service and you import the right template. So I import the template, then all of a sudden I'm in there, the drummer's in there and those needed positions, what's great about those, if you've done everything else, you set up your team and you made the needed positions, then when it's time to actually choose who the keyboard player is going to be, you don't have to remember anything. You click on the little button that says one person needed, and it's going to pop up a thing that gives you a list of all of your potential keyboard players, and that is where you see all the conflicts. Oh, wife is scheduled already in this other ministry, or no blockout, they're on vacation, or doesn't prefer to be scheduled more than three times in a month. There's a whole bunch of different conflicts that can show, that can help you, but they only show when you do this the exact right way. Now, let me tie this all together because this is a lot. We have a video that's called Planning Center University. We actually have lots of small videos and we have an entire section in our online help that's like getting started and it will walk you through this. But even if, if you don't like written documentation, there's a 45 minute video called, uh, well, there's three 45 minute videos, one on setup, one on scheduling and one on music. I actually am the one teaching all of those. So you'll hear me say the things I just said, but it's like a class that goes kind of a little bit slower that really walks you through the exact right steps to get started. Yeah, I think what you said about setting it up, taking the time to set it up right is so important because your software is so powerful and there are so many features that they could take advantage of that if they don't set it up right, they're going to miss out on all of that. Like they could... If you set it up right and you assign people to the teams and assign people to the positions and then you like go and say they can't do these Sundays and they don't want to be scheduled more than three times a month or whatever. And then you could literally like auto schedule people and it'll put them in the right. I've never done that because I like I kind of handpick my teams because, you know, that drummer doesn't play well with that bass player or whatever. But I mean, those are the features that they could take advantage of if they take the time to set it up right. So I'll put a link in the show notes, Aaron, to that uh, video that you're talking about so that people can watch it because they will get get so much more out of planning center if they set it up right. So absolutely. And one of the challenges for us now being around for so long is that now we have people that are new at a church that inherited a bad planning center from somebody else. Mm. So it's kind of challenging for us because we can't just, uh, you know, in the past videos on how to get started, were like good enough. But now it's like, you've already got this thing and you're not totally sure if it's right and you might need to fix it. And I can tell you that The main thing that people have done wrong in the past is they've set up their teams in funky ways. So if you're somebody who inherited it from somebody else, I would still recommend taking a look at this video because in that video, I go through quite a few things that like, hey, if it's like this, that's the first sign that you could probably be doing this a better way. Yeah. Now I want to respect your time. I know you have to head out soon, but one thing that I want you to cover before we end is you guys make lots of software products. You have things like music stand and check-ins and giving and groups and several other products that they all integrate with each other. So I would love for you just to describe to us what the planning center utopia looks like (laughs) when, when a church is using all of your products to correctly integrate to their full potential, what would it look like for a church to have all of that dialed in? Can you kind of paint a picture for us? Yeah. So services is one of seven main applications. The other apps that we have are check-ins, which is our 
one of our most popular ones, check kids into classrooms and like print labels. Some people use it to check their choir in or check people into any classroom or event or service. We have um, planning center resources. That is for managing your facilities. Oh, I need to book this room for this and I need there to be chairs in it and tables in there. Um, we have an app, Giving. Planning Center Giving handles all areas of donations. So it will do online giving, text to give, is included in the price. Um, it will do cash, check, um, basically everything related to your, your giving in your church. Um, registrations is another app that we have. Planning Center Registrations helps people register for events. We find it's most commonly used for like high school winter camp or summer camp, those kind of events, but it can be used for any type of event that you need to take payments for. Um, we have Planning Center Groups, which um, is mostly for small groups, and it allows you um, to have a public page on your website that lets people browse to find a group that fits their criteria on the right day of the week and that's for the right stage of life and all that kind of stuff. And then finally, we have Planning Center People. And Planning Center People is actually the center of the Planning Center universe, and it is 100% free. Everybody that uses Planning Center actually has Planning Center people already there, even if you're not using it. And if you were to switch over to use Planning Center of like for more than just for services, that's how you would get started. You could import a CSV of people into the Planning Center People application, and it lets you – it's like your church member database, but it's got, it's got a ton of features for free. And, it, and especially admins of services can use Planning Center people to track background checks, to do prayer requests for your church. Um, you can make lists of people based on all the apps. So you could say, I want to find people in my church – whose kids have attended once in the last month, um, who are on a serving team but have not registered for this event. And then you get a list of those people and you can email them or do something else with them. So the Planning Center Utopia is growing. Like we've already got the apps and they're talking more and more to each other. And that Central People app, like I said, it's totally free. So if you, if this is the one thing you take out of this today, um, Anybody who's listening, like, go and check out Planning Center People because there's really no pressure to use it, and it can do a ton of stuff for you. Aaron, thank you so much for making an incredible product to serve us worship leaders. We appreciate it, and thanks for your time today. Absolutely. All right, that was awesome. Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us and share some tips. Before we go, I'm going to share a few more tips, tricks, and hacks with you guys that I think might be helpful. I'm not going to explain exactly how to do each one of these things, but I'm going to tell you about them so that you can kind of do some digging and find how to do that. A couple tips. Ready? Here we go. Running reports. You can run several reports in Planning Center under the services page. There's a little button that says reports. You click that and there's multiple parameters that you can choose from and run reports ranging from how often you've used someone on your team to even running like what songs have I done for the last year and how many times and in which services. So like at the end of the year when CCLI asks you to report all your songs, you can literally run a report and have everything right there on a PDF for you to input into CCLI's reporting software. So that's awesome. Uh, you can, here's another tip. You can see if someone has downloaded the media that's attached to a song. So if you have a rehearsal MP3 file and your bass player shows up and doesn't know the song, you can go into planning center and under that attachment, you can see if that bass player accessed that file and when he accessed it and how many times he accessed it. So you can track people how they're preparing. Um, so that's another tip. Um, under a specific person's page, you can see kind of their overall acceptance rate, how often they've accepted or declined or not responded to requests. So you can kind of see what kind of a team member they are. Like if they're, you know, it'll show you like on a meter, mostly green, a little bit of red or mostly red, almost always decline. And you can kind of assess how your team members are doing. Um, you can also see if someone has read a request. So when you request someone to serve, if they don't respond, you can actually track the request was sent on this date, the day that they saw the request was this date, but they haven't responded yet. Or if they did respond, it shows you when they responded. So you can actually see like how quick people are to respond to your planning center requests. Another tip is the matrix view. 
which is also on, on the services page in the top right corner, you see the matrix button. If you click that, you can load multiple plans at one time. So you can schedule multiple teams at the same time and kind of get an overview of how the month's going to look. And if you've scheduled this person too many times or not enough, um, that's, I live in the matrix view. I love the matrix view. So if you don't know about that, check that one out. Also within the matrix view, if you've set up your teams properly, you can use the auto schedule feature that we talked about in the episode, and that'll literally auto populate all the needed positions for you. So that's cool. Another tip is if you input the BPM beats per minute in the song information section. So inside of a song, it has like, you know, how long is the song? What time signature is it? Uh, If you put, you know, it's 84 BPM. When you go into the rehearsal view, in the service flow, there's a button at the top right that says rehearse. If you go into that rehearsal view or if you on your app, click the media player, it'll uh, give you a metronome with the songs and their BPMs at the correct tempo so you can practice to the right tempo of the songs. So if you put the information in, you're gonna get more out of the software. Another tip is with Music Stand, uh, which is an addition that you pay two bucks a month and you can use Music Stand, which is like having your sheet music on an iPad. You can actually sync all your team members' iPads to a master iPad. And when that master person turns the page to the next song, all of the team's iPads get updated at the same time. So that's a tip for those of you who want to try using Music Stand. That's a cool hack. Um, you guys can set up reminder emails when you're setting up a plan. It'll ask if you want to email certain teams a reminder. So you could say, I want to email my worship team a reminder email seven days before the event or three days before the event. Or I want to email the tech team the day before the event to remind them that they're on. So you can set up reminder emails if you didn't know about that. You can turn your plan into a live event. Basically, it opens this giant screen and it tells you what's currently happening. It shows you any notes that are related to that item. It shows you what's coming up next and it keeps in sync between all people using the app. So like if your video crew is over in the back corner of the sanctuary and your audio crew is in the middle of the sanctuary and your broadcast audio crew, I'm just saying if you have a bunch of teams, they all see this live view of the service and it tells you exactly how many seconds are left for each item if you have inputted the time length of the items. So it's crazy powerful. So that's another tip. Here's another tip. I got three more for you, I think. You can create different arrangements of the same song. So if you play one song in two different styles, like country arrangement and pop arrangement, um, then you can have the, the correct chord charts for the country arrangement and the correct chords for the pop arrangement, or even the correct song sequence. Like if you do three choruses in one of them and only one chorus in the other one. So the arrangement section of a song allows you to create multiple instances of the same song. So that's cool. You can also, this one's huge, you can sync Planning Center to Pro Presenter. If you use Pro Presenter for your lyric slides, you can sync the two softwares together so that Pro Presenter will automatically pull the information from your Planning Center plan and populate your pro presenter playlist with the right songs and the right song sequences. Like if you do it right in planning center, then pro presenter will be set up for you automatically. Okay. And then finally, last tip, um, again, there's a million things the software can do, but I'm just trying to give you a few cool little things you might not have known about. You can search for songs based on theme. So if you go to the songs tab and you just in the filter section on the left, you can type, the cross or cross or grace. It'll pull up all the songs that have those themes in them that you can use in your plan. So there's a a quick rapid fire set of tips, tricks, and hacks that I hope will be helpful to you. Um, That's all I have time to give you today. I hope this episode was helpful to you. As always, if this episode helped you, please help us by forwarding it on to a friend who might be helped by this episode. It always helps us when you spread the word about the podcast. So check out Planning Center this month, planning.center, and you can find all that information in the show notes. God bless you guys as you continue to serve your churches excellently, and I will see you next month for another helpful episode.